Senator Mike Quigley has seen the destruction in Ukraine firsthand. He met with President Volodymyr Zelensky during a trip last year. And he's the co-chair of the Congressional Ukraine Caucus, leading aid efforts in Washington. And we are pleased to have the representative joining us now live this evening. Congressman, thanks for being here. Thank you. Good to be here. Well, let's start with that, um, what, what uh, Dana just mentioned about that, uh, the, the treaty there. How concerning, how alarming is it that, uh, that Russia will not be participating uh, in that examination? You know, it's interesting. Uh, first of all, I would say Putin is capable of anything, so we have to take everything he says seriously. Uh, he has made uh, allusions to nuclear threats uh, throughout this conflict, and that's of great concern. On the other hand, we simply can't let him blackmail the West uh, with, with threats of this kind. So uh, we just hope that diplomacy works. And as you saw, uh, there are some contradictions in what President Putin said and what Russia intends to do. Uh, we just need to work as hard as possible diplomatically to uh, attempt to keep Russia along the lines of the treaty as far as we can. Those comments came out of his uh, State of the Union for a Russian audience. Uh, any idea how the message is playing there? Um, how war weary are they getting there in Russia? You know, I, I believe they are, but. Let me put it another way. I'm not sure he cares that mm. much or certainly as much about what the Russian public thinks. I think he is playing to the far right nationalist uh, in his government. Uh, they have some ability, some influence over him, and he has concern about their powers, uh, the Siloviki. Uh, so I, I think this is a president who has sent uh, his troops uh, ill-trained, uh, ill-equipped uh, as virtual cannon fodder. Uh, so I think he is less concerned with how the overall public feels than the, the far-right nationalist who conceivably could take him out if anyone does. And now they're using that private army as well. And President Biden spoke in, in Poland, as you know, pledging commitment and support. Uh, I want to ask you, as, as someone who visited Ukraine and, and knows it firsthand, um, how far do you see that support going, and will it put pressure on Putin going into uh, the war's second year now? Well, I think it was an, a very important, historic, bold trip, uh, sending a message to Ukraine and our allies of a, uh, a continued commitment, more importantly to President Putin, that we're not going anywhere. So uh, you know, that's not going to be easy. Uh, even during the Second World War, you know, we had documentaries, films like uh, Why We Fight to remind the American public why this mattered. So as time goes on, that will be more difficult. But I see a bipartisan, bicameral, unified Congress supporting this conflict. Uh, there's a resolution out there to cut off funding to Ukraine. Now, there's only 11 Republicans on it. You know, I think it's more worthwhile to see uh, Chairman McCall, Chairman Turner, influential Republicans who have, uh, you know, continued to support this conflict through its duration. Uh, you made the same trip uh, that uh, the President Biden made. You made it, uh, I believe, last summer here. How, let me ask, how and when uh, would you guess that this, this terrible war is going to come to a conclusion? Well, if you had told me a year ago that the, the Ukrainian army would be in this position, I, I'd be thrilled. Right. Uh, we were told back then this was going to be a four or five day war. Uh, at this point in time, I concerned that it could be a war of attrition. So when President Zelensky was here and when I met him in uh, last July in Kiev, his message is, is the right one. Help us win quickly. Uh, we, you can't be timid in war, particularly a war against uh, such an evil force as is the Russian army. And when I was in Kiev, uh, outside Kiev in Bucha, you know, I was standing on a mass grave. These are the horrors uh, of history repeating itself after the Second World War. We have to ask ourselves, what kind of country are we? Why do we fight the Second World War? Because the same principles uh, play out here. Illinois Congressman Mike Quigley, uh, grateful to have you with us this evening. Thanks so much. Anytime. Thank you. All right.